So, well, uh, thank you very much to uh, my Japanese friends, Professor uh, Fukumoto, Professor Tsubota, of course, and I see others in the audience. So I'm very pleased to be able to contribute with a talk that uh, thanks uh, to previous uh, speakers, uh, I do not need to justify some connections with helicity because uh, indeed is not apparent in the title, minimal unlinking pathways as geodesics in non-polynomial space. So this is a joint work with uh, uh, Professor Liu, I just talked, and uh, uh, Shinhui Li, who is now in Guangxi University. And we met uh, when he was visiting uh, Beijing uh, University of Technology at uh, Shin's place. Okay, so the objectives are uh, based on the fact uh, that we saw from uh, the talk uh, of uh, Koya uh, Shimokawa, um, the fact that uh, they analyzed the cascade, uh, a topological cascade of uh, uh, knots and links. And so the uh, main objective here is uh, to provide uh, a theoretical framework to analyze topological cascade processes of uh, physical knots without relying on uh, um, standard ideas of uh, topology, but rather offering a new approach to this uh, problem. And uh, of course, uh, the aim is also to be able to compute uh, probability in relation to what uh, we may call optimal paths and of course, optimal with respect to what remains to be seen. Okay, the idea is uh, to appeal uh, uh, to uh, works on uh, superfluids or um, defects uh, where uh, flux tubes are extremely thin. And uh, of course, we have in mind the big problem of uh, turbulence and uh, cascade towards uh, um, structures in scale and uh, topological complexity, um, uh, smaller and smaller, uh, to relate topological changes uh, to energy dissipation and possibly to study generic features of natural decaying processes. So with these, uh, uh, program in mind. Uh, um, let me just go quickly to what uh, we've seen uh, from uh, the talk of Keith uh, and then uh, uh, also from uh, uh, Kaya's uh, talk uh, uh, this afternoon. So we saw that uh, we all know now that uh, um, this uh, beautiful work of uh, uh, Kleckner and Irvine uh, showed uh, uh, from the production of a trifle knot the farther decay into a hot flink, and then what we may call a knot, and then farther down um, a couple of links, uh, un unknotted, uh, uh, unlinked uh, uh, circles, sorry, um, that are gradually going to dissipate due to viscosity. These are experiments done in the lab. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, these uh, uh, vortices are produced in water. Um, now, let me uh, uh, remind us, uh, let me remind you that, um, of course, the assumption of uh, having one single reconnection event uh, um, that uh, leads us uh, to this topological cascade is, of course, a very useful um, idea in doing our mathematics, but due to the infinitely, uh, infinite possibilities uh, in nature, uh, we may have uh, 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 simultaneous reconnections that uh, dramatically change this uh, pattern. And uh, one evidence of this uh, has uh, uh, just uh, shown very recently by uh, the work uh, of uh, Yu Yang uh, um, and uh, Fazal Hussein, uh, just published in a JFM paper 2021, where we see uh, here, uh, we have uh, a trifoil uh, knot that is uh, going to reconnect simultaneously at three locations. And evidently we have uh, an immediate uh, production 
of uh, these uh, separated uh, loops. So we jump directly from the trifoil to, um, to <laughs> the... That's all right. The... Sorry, Renzo. Excuse me. Renzo, you yes? your slide is based on the first one. Mm. Slide first isn't slide. changed. It, it didn't change? No. It didn't change. Okay, Still the cover. So, okay, so uh, let me just... Uh, yes, yes uh, it changed. It changes now. Yes. Okay. Now we can I, see the. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Evidently, I'm uh, running into the problem of Keith. Uh, similar problem. Anyway, so you see here, bottom part of uh, the slide, uh, um, the uh, abrupt transition of a, a reconnecting a trifoil to the formation of uh, two separate uh, loops, and uh, there are, of course, uh, this is a Navier-Stokes direct numerical simulation of Navier-Stokes. Um, uh, and uh, evidently we have uh, these uh, threads of vorticity left behind after the reconnection, immediate reconnection events. Uh, and as, you, as I said, uh, you have uh, a, a jump from the trefoil knot configuration to the unlinked uh, uh, loops. So this has to be uh, reminded uh, because uh, it means that we have, uh, uh, of course, different uh, paths uh, that are uh, possible. Um, in the talk of um, uh, Kaya Shimokawa, uh, we saw also this uh, similar cascade occurring on uh, DNA plasmids uh, on site-specific uh, um, recombinations. And uh, of course, uh, the similarity of uh, these uh, process uh, with the work of uh, uh, Kleckner and uh, Irvine brought us uh, um, the idea to consider uh, first uh, the topological cascade of torus knots and links uh, as uh, we saw by using uh, our adapted Humphrey PT polynomials. In other words, to investigate the process uh, using uh, the results uh, that uh, Xin Liu just uh, showed you. So um, key assumptions here, again, we consider a one reconnection at a time and uh, assuming that uh, um, complexity, topological complexity is reduced uh, all the times and then uh, uh, considering this uh, sequence. Now this sequence of uh, torus knots and links uh, can be thought of uh, as a set uh, of uh, T, torus uh, knots and links uh, to N that uh, is made by ordered elements. So here are our assumptions. All torus knots um, and links, uh, um, we think of them as standardly embedded on a mathematical torus in closed braid form. Then all torus knots and links uh, uh, form an ordered set of elements are listed according to their decreasing value of topological complexity given simply by the crossing number. And then uh, each topological transition between uh, two contiguous uh, elements is determined by a single oriented preserving reconnection event. Okay, so in this uh, context uh, with these assumptions, uh, it's uh, possible to apply our adapted Omphly PT polynomial to uh, characterize the uh, cascade by using numerical values obtained by these uh, polynomials. So this is uh, the result. Uh, uh, computation of the adapted polynomial uh, generates uh, for decreasing n, in other words, for decreasing complexity, a monotonic decreasing sequence of numerical values given by an expression that is uh, um, uh, completely clear in terms of, of A and B, where A and B are known functions of uh, tau and omega, where tau and omega are related to the two uh, variables of the Humphrey PT polynomial. Um, we need uh, as input uh, the polynomial form of uh, uh, the trifoil knot uh, and the Hopf link. And if we apply uh, this, uh, I'm not going to prove this result, is in scientific reports. And uh, of course it relies on the fact that we start 
from uh, um, any knot type we like, and then we apply recursively uh, the skin relations of uh, Humphrey PT, so to get uh, these functions A and uh, B explicitly. And uh, if we do this, uh, Assuming tau and omega that are, remember, related to writhe and twist, uh, we, get, uh, we get this uh, uh, monotonic uh, decrease sequence of numerical values. I should emphasize here that uh, the choice of these numbers, uh, it uh, does not uh, affect uh, the functional monotonic decreasing uh, sequence that we see here. So the functional behavior remains the same, even if we change these uh, numbers. Of course, we've chosen these numbers on the fact that we have uh, uh, very simple uh, torus uh, knots and links here, so we can estimate the average writhe and the average twist. But as I said, these uh, are particular values, uh, but they are not influencing much. Of course, they are changing quantitatively the values here, but they are not changing qualitatively. Um, the behavior. Now, this uh, uh, at first uh, it might look as a great result. Uh, actually, is uh, not terribly uh, in informative. Uh, simply because what we do, we are simply detecting uh, topology by numerical values, and uh, we expect, uh, if our work is correct, uh, that uh, um, these uh, numerical values must decrease according to topology. So in other words, uh, this gives us uh, an extra tool to uh, estimate uh, topology, but of course it is relevant if we want to associate uh, two changes of topology a quantitative measurement, and this is actually important. Now, uh, we saw that uh, cascades of knots can occur in uh, quantum fluids. Uh, Carlo Barenghi showed us uh, uh, knots uh, in uh, superfluids. Of course, this picture taken by their work, uh, Kleckner, Kaufman, Irvin, um, is based on a GPE, on gross pitayevsky equation. So our defects. Uh, and uh, these defect uh, knots, uh, you see, can uh, decay according to a, a rather elaborate scheme, not necessarily according to a standard schemes of uh, uh, knots, uh, torus knots and links. Uh, from Carlos' uh, simulation we saw uh, yesterday that uh, um, uh, very complex uh, knots uh, uh, can be, uh, can be uh, traced. Um, we heard uh, that uh, these knots uh, can uh, not necessarily go uh, from a complex knot down to loops, but uh, there is a, a very uh, complex behavior that uh, depending indeed on the um, reconnections uh, occurring simultaneously or um, not simultaneously um, forming different types of knots. If uh, we think, however, that the final products are loops that are then going to um, disappear, so to speak, or in classical fluids uh, dissipates away, then uh, we go back to the idea that we have to think of a paradigm uh, where uh, these uh, cascade towards uh, simple topologies uh, um, uh, is present. Now I'll rely on uh, uh, the work uh, that uh, uh, Kaya illustrated, uh, and in particular on this diagram and the number of uh, possible paths that uh, link uh, that uh, bring to this unlinking of a complex knot to the uh, final uh, loop, uh, and I take this as a test case for our new theory that I'm going to uh, show you in a moment. Um, remember, before I proceed, that we rely now on the fact that uh, we can use uh, uh, not polynomials to quantify topology. Okay, so this is uh, our idea. Well, uh, what I showed you is uh, uh, our work based on the cascade of torus knots and links. Uh, and if we, if we go to the uh, adapted uh, polynomials, the Omphley PT computations gives us uh, these uh, numerical values that you see here are um, decreasing all the time. 
But of course, uh, we may have uh, transition, uh, for example, at the horizontal level or other type of transitions. Uh, one of the many in this uh, diagram of uh, Stoltz et al. Uh, for example, we can go from uh, the 2-5, the torus knot 2-5, to the composite uh, uh, knot uh, given by the trifoil and the hot flink uh, that is uh, um, uh, uh, represented uh, in the diagram by the letter D. And if we follow different paths, for example, something like this, and we compute the polynomial starting from the 2-6 uh, going to the uh, trifoil knot, we see that Humphrey PT computation still give us um, a decreasing sequence of uh, numerical values. So the question is, uh, which of uh, the two paths uh, are best in DK? Are the numerical values enough? Or maybe we can invent a different strategy. As um, you know very well, uh, uh, we try hard to um, grow on the shoulders of uh, giants and uh, our giants here have uh, two names. One maybe is Arnold name, and the other one you will uh, see in uh, a moment uh, maybe is Einstein. Okay, so we have the idea to introduce a not polynomial space, and the facts that we are going to use are the following. First, that evolutionary processes uh, simplify complex knots to a knot. The second fact is that topological transitions are governed by some kind of energy minimization or some dissipation. And uh, then uh, reduction pathways um, can be seen in terms of probability paths, okay? So these are the ideas that uh, um, are guiding us to develop a different uh, framework. So the strategy, is uh, to uh, place evolutionary processes in appropriate metric space and then uh, interpret these unlinking pathways as geodesics in this uh, space. This is really Arnold uh, philosophy. Um, when we do this, we want to associate uh, probability measures with each geodesic. And in doing this, uh, we have to resort to use uh, the um, Humphrey PT progress uh, from the adapted uh, polynomials. In other words, to associate uh, some uh, numerical values. In other words, to weight these knots. And when we weight these knots by the uh, numbers that we get, uh, we may think that these knots uh, are uh, modifying this uh, metric uh, space. So this is the Einstein idea. Okay. So the methods, first uh, we have uh, to uh, define a discrete metric uh, space whose points are identified with the knot type K. And uh, in particular, uh, we consider the Jones polynomials. Uh, you heard the Jones uh, are the degenerate uh, um, polynomials from Humphrey PT. They depend only on one variable that is X, and uh, uh, we uh, consider this uh, case uh, because it's first of all simpler. And um, then uh, we want to give weight to these uh, polynomials by numerical values. So we resort to the adapted um, version of this polynomial. And this was uh, worked out in a Journal of Physics A paper 2012 uh, um, with, uh, with uh, Shin. So in this case, uh, um, uh, we consider the variable X that becomes E to lambda. If you like, uh, the lambda is representing uh, linking information. And in particular, um, we uh, show there that uh, X uh, can range from one to E so that we can associate numerical values to this uh, polynomial. And the very last bit of, in, of assumption is uh, that uh, we place the origin of our metric uh, space uh, uh, where um, uh, the unknot uh, lives, and in particular, the Jones polynomial one. Okay, 
So this is the strategy. Now I'm going to show you a different uh, picture because of course, uh, as I said, uh, um, you see here, um, the picture shows uh, that the um, more complex knot uh, is like a big mass that is uh, modifying our matrix uh, space. But in actual fact, uh, we want to consider a cascade from that. So a better picture may be represented by this landscape where uh, big uh, knots are given by, if you like, one over the number that you get from Jones polynomial. So they stay on, uh, on peaks. And the idea, these uh, black dots represent uh, different knot types. And as we decrease complexity, then we can interpret uh, these unlinking pathways as uh, uh, possible pathways down to the unknot. Of course, we're looking for geodesics. So maybe the line that I draw is not the optimal one. Maybe there is another one straight down from the complex Tors not two seven to the unknot that you may guess what uh, could be, and that would uh, uh, indicate the fact that we may have uh, instantaneous uh, reconnections at all uh, sites of the torus knot. Here by curly V, I indicate this uh, uh, knot uh, uh, polynomial uh, space. By N, I indicate the degree of the polynomial I consider, and the plus, I indicate the fact that for simplicity, for the moment, we consider Jones polynomials with positive exponents only. So let me proceed with the definition. Okay, so the not polynomial space Vn plus is an N dimensional discrete. Uh, space endowed by Euclidean metric for the moment uh, to be defined below, whose isolated points are singletons are given by adapted Jones uh, polynomial BKX. Uh, we need uh, for uh, uh, this uh, approach uh, the definition of inner product. And uh, so one idea is uh, to appeal uh, to what we know from uh, hyper geometric uh, polynomials. Uh, and here is represented the standard inner product of a generic Jacobi type of polynomials uh, where rho is just a density. And uh, uh, then uh, uh, we can uh, specify um, uh, the case for Legendre polynomials. These are simpler because we set uh, this density equal to one and we can prescribe these limiting um, 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 uh, values to be minus one and uh, one. So we regard the Legendre polynomials as our working tool to construct uh, the metric. Now, as you see, um, when you consider these polynomials, we end up with this uh, uh, result uh, that is not quite nice. We would like it to have uh, not only orthogonality, we would like to be uh, to have polynomials that are orthonormal. And uh, so we uh, must uh, um, just simply adapt uh, our Legendre polynomial um, by a prefactor in order to get uh, uh, the orthonormality condition satisfied. Okay, so this is the first step. Then uh, we just want to construct uh, uh, the Jones polynomials in terms of Legendre polynomials. Uh, well, you go to a linear algebra book and uh, you find this result, uh, a polynomial uh, Vn can be expanded into the first n plus one Legendre uh, polynomials here given L0, Ln, which provide a complete basis for our space, which is now Vn plus. Okay, having done this, we proceed uh, with the calculation of these uh, factors. So we identify, as you see from the first uh, uh, equality, um, we identify the Jones polynomial, better say the adapted Jones polynomial with the Legendre polynomial uh, um, with this orthonormal basis. So we can expand this uh, Jones polynomial and construct it uh, in terms uh, of uh, Legendre polynomials uh, as uh, given here. 
Okay, uh, now since uh, Jones uh, has our variable that is uh, uh, between one and E, we also have to um, um, just uh, adapt our new, um, new uh, limiting uh, uh, integral into uh, the standard form that uh, we saw there. And having done that, uh, we can uh, construct uh, our space. So remember the coordinates of any point in this uh, space um, are just given by this uh, C0, Cn, and these identify uniquely a, a polynomial. And uh, in other words, if n is uh, sufficiently low and uh, for um, the sake of example, we keep n to be below well, let's say nine uh, in the computations, uh, we even uh, consider probably n equal um, uh, uh, six or seven. Anyway, if it is below nine, then uh, Jones uh, identifies uh, uniquely every single knot or link type. Um, okay, and then we are ready to introduce the concept of uh, distance. So the distance uh, dij is the distance uh, is the metric the Euclidean distance uh, between uh, uh, two points and in other words, uh, two uh, polynomials, BKI and BKJ for uh, the two not link types, uh, KI or KJ. And uh, so this is uh, the distance. Now we have to resort uh, to uh, computations. And uh, of course, it's a lot of work, uh, Xin Fei, uh, spent uh, several months uh, to have uh, uh, to have uh, uh, various uh, tables of uh, numerical values uh, correct uh, in order to analyze uh, all these uh, possible paths involved in this diagram. So we take as a reference path uh, uh, pi zero the direct uh, um, uh, transition from the two six uh, to the unknot. And so in terms of distances, this is just the direct distance between uh, these uh, two knot types. And then uh, this is uh, our reference uh, path. And then we start to compute uh, uh, paths according to um, the possible um, uh, unlinking um, uh, directions that we choose. So we identified um, 17 paths. Of course, uh, uh, notice as, uh, as uh, Kaya pointed out, uh, uh, it is possible to prove uh, that the shortest ones uh, are just nine, but uh, we went uh, all the way to consider other possibilities. Of course, there are others still to be considered, but they contribute less and less to uh, the numbers we get. So 17, I think, are uh, sufficient to get uh, appropriate uh, uh, numbers. Uh, here are shown in different colors, uh, the four paths that are indicated. Um, the red one is the one that uh, was uh, discussed uh, in terms of numerical values at the, uh, in the first part of uh, my talk. Now, in order to consider this first path, the red one, we want to consider the distances of each pair and to sum up uh, all the distances. So in other words, uh, these, uh, um, these uh, trajectories uh, uh, could be thought of as uh, uh, piecewise uh, linear polygonal curves in terms of distances. Now, of course, we can do the same and calculate these uh, distances according to the other path. So we have path two in orange, and then we have uh, path, uh, path three, which is uh, yellow, and uh, then path four in green, and so on. We have uh, path five and path six and uh, seven. And uh, you see it entails uh, a lot of computations of all these distances. But uh, theoretically, there is not much. Uh, you know, I think it can be uh, easily, um, implemented in uh, some uh, numerical coding, just uh, to avoid uh, Xin Fei or other collaborators uh, to do a lot of work by hand. Okay, I'll uh, 
just uh, sketch quickly the path eight and nine. And then, uh, of course, uh, the other path uh, from 10 to 13, similar things. And uh, finally, 14th to uh, 17th path will be shown here. Okay, so having done that uh, and computed all the distances, uh, we uh, are ready now to introduce uh, the concept of uh, probability. First of all, we like to uh, use the idea of a relative deviation. This is, uh, remind, uh, um, um, I remind you that, uh, um, I mean, these are very simple uh, definitions and of course, can be, uh, can be um, extended, if you like, to more complex uh, definitions. So the uh, simplest one is just the given here, sigma i is just the departure of the path uh, pi i from the direct path, we keep it as a reference path, uh, pi zero, this uh, dramatic uh, um, um, uh, cascade from the complex knot to the unknot. And then uh, the probability, again, uh, the simplest uh, definition we can uh, uh, come up with is uh, this one, uh, which is just given in terms of uh, deviations. Okay, so I'm towards the end. Uh, here is the first the result uh, is that uh, the various uh, uh, knots and uh, links uh, that we consider in the diagram uh, that I showed you are just uh, uh, grouped in. Uh, uh, families that are identified by these orange uh, orange uh, um, regions. And if we look at the probability, uh, probability is uh, extremely low, uh, negligible. If we go from a path, uh, say, uh, five or six onwards, so only the very first path in particular, the cascade through um, uh, torus knots and links uh, has a very high probability. Um, these are our, our results. So this is work published in uh, communications physics. And uh, these are the results in terms of probability that we computed according to the scheme that uh, I uh, just uh, discussed. It's uh, good to compare these results uh, with the results obtained by the group of uh, uh, Mariel Vasquez and the work done by uh, Koya and others. Uh, so the paper of Stoltz et al. And uh, as you can see, there is a, a rather good, uh, a rather good uh, um, um, uh, comparison. I mean, the uh, results we obtain are the same order of magnitude and sometimes uh, uh, extremely close uh, to the values computed by Stoltz et al. Uh, remember that uh, in our case, uh, we consider 17 uh, paths, um, there may be more to be added, and the more we added and the uh, numbers change, but not significantly, not significantly. So I think uh, this is uh, sufficient just as a test case to uh, show that uh, an alternative framework can be considered and uh, has potentials to be implemented in uh, computational, um, in numerical coding. Uh, the, there are already abundance uh, of uh, definitions for topological complexity. Here we have one more. Topological complexity of a knot uh, can be defined in terms of uh, what we call complexity degree K of the knot. And uh, we uh, just uh, suggest uh, this uh, possible definition, the logarithm of one plus uh, the distance uh, of uh, a given knot and uh, um, just uh, the unknot. And if we use uh, this uh, definition, we can uh, graph uh, the uh, various uh, knots uh, and uh, links uh, that we have uh, on uh, the diagram of uh, Stoltz et al. And uh, we see that they uh, stay uh, pretty close uh, uh, to this uh, dashed line. And uh, this is interesting because uh, it gives us, uh, uh, if you consider the best, uh, the blue line, the blue dashed line as the best fit curve, it gives us uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, information. Now, I will uh, not uh, go into 
to further discussion of this uh, logarithmic uh, behavior. I just, uh, I didn't put any reference here, but I just like to say that uh, a similar, very close, similar uh, logarithmic behavior was found by um, Francesca Maggioni and myself uh, in a paper, J. Uh, Fizz A paper 2014, when we consider uh, the spectra of um, uh, tight uh, magnetic knots and links. Uh, we consider 250 um, knots and links, uh, uh, the very um, minimum energy state uh, uh, according to a uh, constraint relaxation uh, that uh, Keith uh, mentioned, i.e. keeping the cross section of the flux tube circular, etc. And uh, if you look at the best fit curves that we got for knots and links, also there we found uh, the logarithmic uh, behavior shown here. So it is very interesting and intriguing because, uh, you know, these uh, kind of curves emerge in uh, uh, in various uh, dissipative systems have to do, of, of course, with entropy and all that. And uh, so it has uh, a potential for further information. Um, in any case, uh, this is uh, what I wanted to say. So better to stop here in case of, uh, of uh, questions. So let me thank you again. Domo arigato. Gozaimasu to everybody. Thank you very much for listening. Renzo, thank you. Thank you very much for the nice talk. So, thank you. So, do you have any questions or comments? Yes, Professor Shimoka, please. Uh, uh, Renzo, thank you very much for your Hi, beautiful Claudia. talk. Uh -huh. So, uh, I'm interested in the uh, probability of the path especially from uh, the past 10 to 17. So you find, uh, uh, can you show the uh, slide of the past? Okay, uh, let me... Um, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. this one, yes. This one, yes, yes. Yeah? No? So okay. here uh, you find the uh, path from uh, A to towards 25. So, and uh, the percentage is uh, big, 14.9%. Uh, and uh, uh, in our simulation, we only consider very short uh, links in a simple cubic lattice, and we cannot find that. So I think it's very interesting. And, and my question is that, uh, do you think that pathway uh, have some good uh, explanation? Or can, do you think you can see such a reconnection in some situation? Or do you have some comment on that? You know, I have uh, one side of my interests are in applications. And uh, um, from my uh, experience, uh, I can just uh, say this. Uh, I find uh, very, very hard to think uh, of um, uh, have uh, a really an experimental uh, setup where uh, the case A appears, uh, you know, you have a twist there. And uh, well, if, uh, and uh, if uh, I think of geometry, you likely have uh, inflection points. And uh, if you think of uh, magnetic field lines, uh, they do not like inflectional uh, stage. Uh, they go to an inflection free stage and they rapidly uh, evolve to uh, get rid of inflections. So I find it uh, not really um, um, uh, believable to see a transition from A to the torus knot 25. Similarly for vortex uh, filaments that are driven um, essentially by curvature effects. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I doubt very much. Uh, this is first comment. Second comment is uh, please uh, uh, keep in mind that this is just a, a test and uh, so, it, you know, it is uh, uh, likely that uh, other uh, contributions from different paths uh, would uh, change these numerical values. So these are just uh, uh, an indication of how promising could be the um, theoretical uh, ideas that we proposed, but uh, I wouldn't uh, trust this number too much. 
So evidently, when we see uh, this 14.9, uh, suggests that uh, it is possible. If, uh, if we think of different contexts, for example, as you know well, uh, DNA, polymers, uh, in that case, uh, who knows? Maybe it depends, of course, uh, greatly, again, on the uh, physical effects induced by the strands. So in other words, uh, by the chemical um, uh, distribution and the potentials associated to that. So I, I cannot say much about that if I think of physical applications. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank okay. you, Koya. Okay, the next, Carlo, please. Hello, Renzo. Um, Hi, Carlo. Thank you for the nice talk. I have thank this, you. the following question. So imagine that um, the decay of the structure which you have there, T26, now takes place in the presence of another T26 in the vicinity <laughs> or some other structure in the vicinity. Then, depending on the physical system and the way actually these knots interact, they can be magnetic field lines, vortex lines, then the probabilities will be very different. Or am I wrong? Oh, you are absolutely right. Um, as, uh, as usual in science, we all know this. You start with a very simple idea and then uh, you leave it. Uh, if it has life, it will survive and you can apply this idea to more complex situations. Yes, you are absolutely right. Uh, this is just uh, a way to see if um, a different strategy can be used in order to analyze these systems. Um, as you see from the um, connected sum of, of two trefoils uh, that are in the first, uh, uh, at the center of the first uh, uh, line of the diagram, immediately you see that uh, you can go one way or the other way. You can go towards the two six or uh, the A configuration. And again, um, uh, you know, um, Evidently, this is even more true if you have, uh, um, you know, neighboring uh, uh, complex knots that may interact one another. So this is, uh, I think the greatest news uh, comes from you, Carlo, in uh, finding uh, complex uh, knots, so complicated knots. By the way, I should emphasize that uh, when you uh, show the um, degree of uh, the order of 200, uh, I think uh, several not theorists I contacted, all of them very well known from Jones at the time, to Lou, to so many others, everybody was uh, shocked. There is no way uh, to, um, uh, to uh, compute uh, with polynomials such, uh, such complicated knots. And uh, you enter into the problem of uh, um, polynomials detecting that specific knot or not. So um, it's an open question for mathematicians too. Anyway, so you show that, uh, that uh, you, we have indeed the possibility to have extremely complex structures and they interact evidently far, far more than uh, the simple diagram that uh, I relied on for my talk, yeah. So work ahead to be done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The last question is uh, Yokoi san, oh. please. Oh, thank you. Uh, Renzo, thank you very much. I really hi, Nabu. Hi. Hi, hi. So, uh, so you, you gave me a very nice perspective on the uh, polynomial space behaviors. Thank you very much. And uh, then my question gives some related more complexity. So as you know, I'm a researcher on turbulence. Then we always discuss about uh, a cascade and uh, a dual cascade and bidirectional cascade, blah, blah. And uh, you clearly uh, mentioned that the topological transition is governed by, by, by energy minimization, minimization. But at the same time, so, uh, some constraint related to helicity uh, uh, affect the cascade, even direction of the cascade of energy itself. It is not the total amount of energy, but the scale transfer, scale transfer. Then uh, could you say, uh, make some comment on such a, especially bi-directional uh, cascade? Uh, utilizing your, your very impressive method. 
Um, well, okay. Uh, thank you for the question uh, because it brings back to this uh, landscape. Uh, um, you surely uh, noticed that at a certain point uh, I, um, I mentioned the fact that we uh, consider uh, the Euclidean um, metric in a flat space. Next step uh, could be, uh, and indeed uh, brings me back to uh, actually my very first paper I published uh, back in 1991 on uh, higher dimensional manifolds and uh, strings moving there. Um, um, uh, the, the other possibility is uh, to in, in, introduce um, a, a manifold instead of a Euclidean space and uh, take account uh, of um, uh, the energy um, in some simple situation, for example. Again, simple situation given by, uh, say, trifoil or uh, these kind of knots. Uh, this can be done also due to the progress of uh, defects on GPE and um, uh, introduce uh, this energy context um, um, into uh, the, the metric into the curvature and the tensors that are governing, uh, controlling this manifold, so that uh, you can really um, approach better this uh, cascade shown on this landscape uh, by uh, energy mm -hmm. levels uh, also. Uh -huh. and, mm -hmm. or, or alternatively, by dissipative, uh, uh, dissipative uh -huh. uh, uh, mm -hmm. estimates. Mm -hmm. uh, so this would would add complexity to the problem, but mm -hmm. in a sense, uh, once uh, once uh, you address the problem, is uh, maybe not that difficult. Uh, uh -huh. uh, oh. Yes, not not difficult. You think? Okay, great. Uh, well, <laughs> good to, good to know. Not not too difficult. Uh, <laughs> okay, good, uh, good. I can advertise on this uh, uh, uh -huh. very recent uh, new paper by. Um, um, a PhD student of mine, Alice Reutberg, mm -hmm. and myself on, uh, again, General Physics A, where we, um, um, uh, we derive the, um, the uh, uh, we construct uh, the Gross-Pitayevsky hydrodynamics form of equation into, the, um, into a manifold. And so you have uh, really a very general setup where you can have these, uh, uh, tensors uh, acting mm -hmm. as, uh, as um, you know, functions of energy, say, or, you know, this is not that difficult. It was done okay. by Einstein okay. good, good, in terms of good. mass, so it can be done. <laughs> okay, good. Good at the mire. Good at the mire. Okay. Then uh, we'd like to close the session. Finally, we'd like to thank two speakers again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. See you. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.